Good day, my friends. Today, it's all about panel lining and scribing. Let's go. Yo, welcome back to the channel, uh, to the gel. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to the channel. Last time you've seen me snap building the RX and this time around I would love to take a new step towards Gundam customization, uh, which is panel line scribing. Panel line scribing, I think it's gonna be an interesting journey and it's also gonna be a scary journey. And I'm trying this out on, on the, the uh, high grade, right? So there's not a lot of money that goes to waste if I fail. But it's not that I'm going completely unprepared into this. I've done one half of the, of the kit, you know, to get used to the technique before uh, showing this on camera because, you know, um, nobody wants to see a complete noob. So I have a little tiny bit of experience with this. And from here on out, uh, I would love to share with you the experience that I had while doing this and also how I'm going to copy the lines that I did on this side to the other side. Uh, there are some very interesting techniques that I've seen uh, in, in, in other YouTube videos and uh, we're gonna talk about this uh, as we go. All right, let's dive right into it. First up, what is panel line scribing? It's basically a technique to add more details to the surface of your kit. While most of the kits already have a decent amount of detail, models from the high grade category, for example, lack those details. So customizers use all sorts of tools to achieve a higher level of detail just to spice things up. So what exactly do you need to perform this kind of art? Most of the people use chisels in a variety of sizes. I have a Tamiya chisel holder and three sizes of cemented carbide engravers by Border Model. Next up, you need some sort of guides to help you carve the lines. I'm using Dymo tape because it's so hard to get your hands on proper scribing tape in the country where I live. It works okay I would say. Next up are some smoothing files and sandpaper in different roughnesses to clean up scrap irregularities and such. Then two pairs of compasses which I'm using to do symmetric panel lines. A technique that I've learned from the master of scribing, Ravi Pla. And then don't forget a regular brush and a mechanical pencil to draw out your panel designs. Speaking of designs, there's a reason why I called panel line scribing an art. There are certain rules to follow when thinking of drawing out new panel lines. Before doing my first panel line, I had to look at a ton of other Gunpla kits to understand the art behind it. There's a certain aesthetic to a Gunpla design. And I suggest that one should familiarize themselves with that aesthetic first. There are two videos that helped me a lot. First one is made by Justin from G Academy slash G Studio. He did a quick rundown on how to do panel line scribing and he also talks a bit about choosing the right designs. Then there is a more theoretical video by Studio Rihito. They talk in depth about panel line designs. The video is in Japanese though. Uh, I'll, I'll link it anyway, so maybe you can take away at least some bits for you. Once I settled with a design, the first thing I would do is to use the soft finish file to roughen up the surface of a piece first. This way the pencil sticks better to the surface. Now let's talk about the Dymo tape a bit. While I think it served its purpose quite well, I do have some gripes with it. For starters, I don't like that it's completely opaque. Sometimes it becomes so difficult to see the pencil line and you don't know where to start and to stop, especially when you have connecting lines. So punching a small hole at both ends of the panel lines becomes vital, otherwise you might overshoot. Then after you're done and peel off the tape, it leaves some ugly residue. This is a smaller gripe but it's still kinda annoying. What's more problematic is that the tape is very sturdy. On the one hand it's good because your chance of slipping off is rather small but you can't bend it. Sometimes I would want to scrap around an edge, but it's impossible to do so with such a sturdy tape. Also, its adhesive is very strong, so peeling it off becomes quite difficult at times. I have a package of dedicated scribing tape, which is shipping my way as I speak, and I can't wait for it to arrive. Okay, so once the tape is aligned with your design line, it's time to scribe. 
I made it an imminent rule to start off very light. And by very light, I mean really light. Almost as if I'm using a pencil to write on paper. I would go a couple of strokes with very light pressure and work my way step by step until the carving line becomes visible. Even then, I'd rather prefer to keep on going light. Scribing is a technique that requires a high level of attention and a lot of patience. You wouldn't want to ruin your kit by slipping off now, would you? Once the line became visible, I mustered some courage and went faster. It might sound contrary to what I've said before, but when the line is visible, carving faster makes for a cleaner line. If you go too slow, you might end up doing those stutter steps which tend to be visible in the line. Okay, so I've done half of the kit. What about the other side? I need them to be symmetric, right? So that's where the pairs of compasses come into play. I used them to measure out distances of my designs and transferred them over to the other part of the kit. It's a tedious process, but by using this method, you make sure that everything is in order. Don't hesitate to draw out extra support lines with your pencil. It makes it easier to mirror everything. If you want a thorough explanation of this technique, Please visit Ravi Pla's channel. They did a tutorial on how to mirror lines. It's what I used to learn this. I'll link the video in the description. So there you have it. That was my first attempt at panel line scribing. I think uh, the results, they look decent. I'm happy with it considering that it was my first time. It's a fun technique to pick up. The basics are kind of easy to learn, but mastering the technique is definitely, definitely gonna take some time. And also be sure to take a lot of breaks. If you feel exhausted, put the kit away, do something else and come back to it later because you don't want to ruin parts of it. This actually happened to me. Uh, I accidentally swept uh, the front and back design of uh, some of the, the leg skirts and I will have to come up with a solution to hide this, but uh, we're, we're gonna see. It's definitely gonna be a technique that I will be using for my future kits as well, uh, as I'm trying to do more Gundam customization. But for now, I'm gonna put the chisel away. Instead, I'm gonna be picking up these bad boys. And the next episode is gonna be all about colors. Uh, to be more precise, I will be trying, I will be trying some uh, weathering and battle damage. I also got these Tamiya weathering kits. So if you're looking forward to seeing how this goes, please hit subscribe. Uh, like and comment and I will see you in the next video. Take care.